I just go on my socks because that's what cool people do. Well, and they're pretty socks too, the belegas. Are those belegas? What do you what These are you are bombas. Oh, bombas. It's all he wears. Bombas. So, Jason, Jason Tierney t- turned me on to these. So. Belegas? Belegas. What's pretty he sweet. Doing He's heard, doing anything he I can. Heard, I heard he kind of separated. He just, stuff, yeah, he's he wants he's to write. Separatist. He wants to write and read. A and, separatist. You know, I know, I know. And y'all ride close. his bike. I'm not knocking him. Yeah. I just, I'm always been a little bit. I'll knock him. Dude. Nah, Jason's Jason's funny. So All right. he sent me the he's picture. Cool he sent me the picture when uh, 2020 was going on, yeah. and he was like, "Check out my feng shui." And he's got like the the, the little. Didn't um, he like get an RV or something and drive? No, around? so he put the tent on top of his Forerunner that okay. add on with Toyota. Yeah. yeah, and he went on like a six thousand mile trip. Yeah, just something. drove around the country. Sure. You know, that's went what, to it, find it, ultra running. Yeah. yeah, so he he ran in a Kansas field for <gasps> eight hours or something. I'm like one field. Mm. Fuck out! I got dizzy. It's, man. it's a, like NASCAR. Uh, Kansas those, has some big fields. Those ultra right. those ultra guys are fucking nuts. You know, Andrew had that badass. Still does that badass fucking tent thing that was on the back of his truck. Yeah. I was like, how much you spend for this? Like three thousand? He goes, no, oh, four thousand. Fucking rent a room. Well, then he <laughs> fucking, yeah. no, no, he pulled this thing out. Like it, fucking, it was unbelievable. Badass, and that's what Jason's got. So he'd sleep with his forty-five, oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah, you know, in the yeah. middle of nowhere. Yeah, but he, uh, so he sends me where, that feng shui picture. I'll going, find dude? it. Yeah. I'll find the feng shui picture, but he's got that. Where's where's it coming? People just fucking coming down now. That Remington five twenty pistol yeah. grip shotgun just laying on the back of his his <laughs> table behind the couch. So I said, here's my feng shui. And I showed him our new counters in the kitchen, but there's my 45. 45 on the, on the countertop. <laughs> Shit, I was oh, doing tell those guys when uh, the cops came to knock on my door Super Bowl Sunday at like 3.30 in the morning to tell me to get to Fort Worth because my dad's going to expire. Uh-oh. And uh, when the dogs go crazy, man, there's a I got a 45 on my nightstand. I got a 45 on my desk. Yeah. And I grab my gun. I come around the corner and I'm peeking out the door and there's two cops. I'm like... Let's leave this one. In yeah, the let's just, just leave this one. <laughs> I just one left here. it in the kitchen. I'm like, can I help you, gentlemen? I have the uh, the governor, uh, which is the, the revolver. Not the, the judge, the governor. It's, it's the <laughs> Smith and Wesson's okay. version of the judge. Or wait, who makes the judge? Uh, the judge is uh, uh, Taurus. Taurus. Taurus is the judge. All I know is the new Tesla truck supposedly can uh, stop a 45. Can't stop a baseball, but it can stop yeah. a forty-five. Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> the judge is the greatest gun. What is no, the, no, 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 uh, no. Smith the, and Wesson's version is the governor. Right. I was going to say there's a there's one that's yeah. The yeah. judge shoots the at judge, 520. and then they had a lower one because you did the four ten shells and the forty-five and the forty-five yeah. long colt. Right. That's the same thing as the governor. That pattern. On well, the, I just shot an that old pattern school. on. on I that just shot an old. School. It's a cool dairy, gun. Uh, Should I go get Harry gun? For the first time, three fifty-seven. It it was. I've never felt anything like it. It. My buddy shot it almost went out of his hand. Like it's yeah. so much power. Yeah. Of course, we gear and stuff. Here, I, I just took them. That way, we're not just fucking chugging like we did last time. Yeah, I was a little tipsy last time. I was too. Yeah. Well, I mean, you were just having a good old time was, listening to music. La, la, la. It was like a little private show. All right, let's well, get this started. I, um, I don't know what to expect. So, no, you're good. You're here. I you're left good. my I left my short shorts and tool belt up at the house. That's so. okay. That's fair. Uh, so normally, how we begin an episode, since you finally watched one or listened to one, is we cheers. You're uh, electing not to drink today. We're doing is this somebody's cup? favorite. Can I just take it. You can, it? Use, it. You can yep. just use that. We're doing Brandon's favorite, Deep Eddie's Ruby Red. Love Very special occasion because we have the one and only Joel Blitz with us. Joel Blitz. Guys. Hey man, cheers! Thank you for sleeping around with Doctor Brandon and Matthew, brother. Let's mm. do this. All right, so we got Joel Blitz. Yes, we, we do today in studio. Yes, we do. Joel, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Not sure why you guys got me. <laughs> I will. I will explain. <laughs> I, I can explain all things. So, whenever we started this podcast, since you have never watched our podcast, on no, I, I listened to it on oh, okay, the way okay. down. I didn't want to get distracted. Um, man, you're 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 a legend, and <laughs> I mean that in all respect. And so uh, we share some common friends some people that worked with NMR for a while, obviously you used to work for Somnomed for a little while. Uh, one of the things that I really enjoy about you and why you'd be a good guest is everybody likes you, man. And everybody's got a Joel story. And I thought a guy who's been around this industry with your knowledge, um, 
could bring so much to our podcast besides being a cool dude, which we all know that, um, your knowledge of the industry, man. Um, you do home sleep testing right now. You do the dental division for Itamar. Is that correct? Run that. Yes, sir. And so you've been around this. Uh, I'm still a newbie, man, when it comes to the dental side and, and sleep appliances, oral sleep appliances, I'm brand new. I mean, I'm just over a year. Yeah. About 15 months. Now I've been in the sleep industry for a while. So with all that being said, tell us a joke. No, I'm just kidding. I don't want to put you online. No. I got a great one. Oh, let's do it. Let's do no, it. No, I, I, I don't. Oh, don't. I've lost them all. Have I've you lost really? them all? You know, uh, you know what's red and smells like blue paint? Red paint. Oh, oh, yeah. really? Because it's all paint. <laughs> blue paint smells. And not like the best joke. We can edit that out. No, I forgot. I've forgotten any good ones, but uh, they all tend to be a little too colorful. I, I got was, a good one. Oh, I got oh, a good one. Are we really doing this? It's kind of my standard one, though. It's, right. I only have one joke nowadays. I've just don't hit me as hard as you hit that monkey. I've lost all the other jokes. Okay, so what is the difference between a chickpea? And a garbanzo bean. <laughs> this I've never had a uh, garbanzo bean on my face. Yeah, that's right. one of the that's greatest right. shows. Yeah. <laughs> By the grace of God and these three fingers. All right. Uh, what I like to do now is just tell uh, punchlines yeah. and people who know the jokes uh, know them. Let's get serious for a minute. Um, and not really serious. Uh, your sleep background. Um, how long have you been in sleep? Not personally, but how long have you been in the business of sleep, Joel? So um, I was fortunate enough to get hooked up with the, the folks that brought Somnomed here back in 2007. So I'm in 15 wow. years. Wow. Um, Is that when I was thinking about you? I, me, I remember meeting Brandon probably 11 years ago. Come on, his please. First meeting. It wasn't. Yeah, it was actually 2014. Uh, was what it, was it was longer than that. No, it has to be. It was Kent Smith. It was Kent, Kent Smith. It was at Kent Smith's course. Kane and Waters. I went and I went back. It was at Kane Waters. And it was in 2014. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, uh, I had been in Austin just for a couple of years and, uh, that's where I met you. Yeah. Is that the, is that what he does? Wasted days and sleepless yeah. nights, yeah. that yeah. type of thing. Okay. Yeah. And I re I remember it vividly cause I'm like, we started talking he's like, oh yeah, I went to UT and played football. I'm like, dude's a dentist, man. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What I remember about that, uh, weekend was you gave everybody these home sleep tests yeah. to use. You had like a whole, like maybe 18 of them. Right. And, and everybody got to go to their hotel uh, and use it that night. And what I remember was that by the time I went to put it on, <laughs> I was so intoxicated. I didn't know which button to push or which yeah. appendage to put it on. Right. And well, that could have been uh, fun. We, we might have gotten uh, two and a half hours of data. Uh, I'm going to go back night. in my database and find that report. That would have yeah. been great. Yeah. I, I still have it. I'm sure. I like that he says we. Who was in your room? Uh, Joel was in my room. No. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> it's Watchpad. It's not, uh, it's not Watch Joel. Me, me, <laughs> it's Watchpad, man. Me and the Pat's Watchpad. watching, not yeah. you. Okay. So, uh, yeah, actually, I don't know that I had anybody in my room that night. You're just saying we. Yeah, just I think you did. Fun. It was just think me, and did. The, me and the Watchpad. I might have. Who knows? No, I think you did. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're, uh, you were connected at that time. Uh, yeah, well. Anyway, hey man, that's what I remember about Watch Pat and, right. and the first time I met Joel uh, back in the day. Yeah, I think, yeah. Uh, well, I first met Joel. Um, it was kind of cool. Uh, my boss now, well, not anymore, my kind of boss now, Lewis Myers, um, introduced us and with Andrew's help. And uh, Andrew Nankus, I always tell an Andrew story on this podcast, by the way. Hey, Andrew's Andrew, one what's of my, up, bro? Yeah, he's one of my dear friends. And he's like, man, you got to meet Joel. I guess you gotta meet this guy. I don't know where all this comes from, man, because uh, well, I'm just a guy. Right? Yeah, I'm just and, a guy. And we all got together in Plano at Tupelo Honey. Tupelo Honey, man. And you'll find out I got a pretty good memory. Yeah, about, yeah, yeah. Tupelo <laughs> Honey. And uh, so, yeah, we all met there. And man, I just thought, man, this is a cool yeah. dude. And then I had no idea about your background with Sonomit. Like, of course, Andrew <laughs> left all that out until we started having a few drinks. Yeah. Well, that's what, you know, I always tease the people at Sonomit. I'm right. like, hey, anytime you want to send a thank you card, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. That's why you got a job. We built yep. that sucker. So uh -huh. it's, uh, yeah. no, the guys, you know, John Truett brought it over from Australia with yep. Ash. And, yep. you know, Jody Jacks was mm -hmm. hired there and came to the States with them. Um, it Out seems like everywhere yeah. I've gone, it's I follow Jody because it's like, yeah. <laughs> well, and then a Gus. I got to give a shout out to Gussie. So Gus right. Durrell, 
Yeah. Um, so I don't know a lot about you before Itamar. So I, I guess oh, well. before or even going back to Somnomed, were you already in dental sleep? No. Prior man, to Somnomed? No, guys, what? I was driving a battery truck <laughs> <laughs> of all the things. That's why, you know, you asked, uh, you know, I told you it was the Grateful Dead. What a long, strange trip mm -hmm. it's yeah. been. Mm -hmm. Man, I could tell you stories of jobs that, you know, you'd be like, you did what? Like mm -hmm. I used to hook telephone poles and splice cable in the air. Okay. Right? Wow. Um, I uh, like for the phone company, or like for well, Southwest a subcontractor. Bell, okay, yeah, contractor. Um, like did, the lineman. Yeah, like you aerial, were a lineman? aerial underground. On the line? Yeah. What? And then uh, that was like when I realized I needed to go back to school, and I really? went back to school and. I worked in country clubs. Uh, I drove strippers. That's that's yeah. like the one job you tell people. I don't know if you guys know Jeff Hinden and John Kelly, but they're a couple wild asses. Yeah. And if they're here listening, I'm going to send them a link. Um, I started telling them a story about it. And they're like, you did what? Yeah. You need to write a book. But, you know. Yeah. Well, let's dive Shit. into this. Well, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> so, 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 tell me more. Uh, uh, it was until I got a gun drawn on me yeah. that I realized, you know. Maybe I had to hit so the hold books on. When a you say sharp. you drive strippers around, you weren't a limo service. I'm assuming, no. I'm just guessing from what Dan told me, you drive them to bachelor bachelor parties. Yeah. What camera am I supposed to be looking at? This one right here. It doesn't matter. He's all got right. them all around. So they're all on so you. So it was uh it was a happenstance. Yeah. And um I've never heard of that club. Where's that one? <laughs> That's hop and stance, okay, right? Hopping. No, um met these girls and uh you know the one girl hit me up and says hey what do you do on the weekends i'm like i usually work at the club you know worked at a country club yeah. um but i don't know what are you into you know i was there trying to figure it out uh -huh. so we went out on a date and figured it out and um she's like hey do you think you'd give me and my friends a ride tomorrow night i'm like sure i don't got a car i'm riding a bike but you know if yeah. you got a car so you're I a hot commodity drive. right yeah now. right i was like you know i'm like she's like hey well, how to get together and i was like if you'd like to ride on my handlebars, I mean, I don't got a ride. Right. So I was living with a couple coaches and uh, I'd ask them to borrow their car and they'd let me borrow the car. And, you know, I take her out in this seven series Beamer one night and she's like, man, got it together. And I'm like, Oh no. no. Girl. Oh, so you were <laughs> straight up on they, this. No, they are, funny. they are at the Olympics in Spain right now. And I got this house up on the hill in Glendora, California. And it's beautiful. You know, there. Neighbors, Michael Anthony and, oh, you know, geez. from the head. So Madman. all kinds of good shit happening. And, uh, and I said, oh, yeah, that's not my car. She's like, oh, don't worry. You can drive our cars. I was like, all right. Show up. They're all dudded out. I'm like, so exactly what are we doing here? She's like, all right, this is what you got to do. And I got like a 10-minute crash course on the drive to this location. And uh, I said, seems easy enough. I mean, yeah. bring in the jukebox or the, you know, back in the day, it was late 80s, right? Jam box. Jam box. Well, yeah. jukebox. Jam, jam box. Yeah. So, uh it was the jam box and it was like, here's the towel. Okay. Her money goes in one pocket. My money goes in the other pocket. Don't be surprised. Wait, at any, wait, 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 wait. Don't wait, be surprised wait, wait, at any wait. shit you see. Yeah. Did, did you like, catch it too? All right. So we have the music. Music. Right? Jam we, have, box. we have the ladies. Right. Towel. 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 I was a towel boy. You know, at parties that, you know, oh, okay. you got to clean them off for the next guy. Okay. You don't want to, yeah. you know, it's, it's, you know, that's where I learned my first thing about hygiene. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. No, you, you gotta be, this is you, way before you COVID. Have to be, you have to be hygienic in these so situations. So these guys are just, you know, just like, how'd you get this job? And I'm drinking their beer, eating their food and yeah. holding the money for the ladies. And you're enjoying the show. Make sure they get out of there safe. Mm -hmm. We leave mm -hmm. and I give each of them their pocket of money and yeah. they'd in turn give me how much did they pay you to do this it's none of your well, business well it depends on how much they made but i could make four hundred dollars a night and not have to take my clothes off yeah you know and it was it was fun as hell this is it was fun as hell right until right until the gun until the gun pulled. came out yeah so yeah. how long were you able to sustain this before the gun came out I was probably doing it a year and a half. Oh my Gosh, goodness. Dan. Oh my goodness. Dan, I found your new career. Everybody, everybody, <laughs> a new career. I did. Everybody's, Dan's, every, everybody's like. Dan's already been looking at fluffing. I know. <laughs> now we have a whole nother idea. I've only, I've only got a, I've only got a gun pulled on me one time. It's at a basketball court. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. 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 That's a, that's what, what were you doing their, at a basketball that's court? Takes their basketball. a grown man's shot to the backboard. Oh, yeah, he, did not, yeah. he did not. Somebody like who that. takes their basketball very seriously. I could tell. He said, or, pinned, or pinned. maybe there was no basketball at the court. No, he's trying. It was to, just a drug deal gone. That's what <laughs> I was going to say. He was a drug deal gone. <laughs> he was back. trying to get an iPhone for free. Uh, so I'm going to hear yeah. about this. Uh, so the gun, the gun got pulled. Yeah. Yeah. So why? Uh, 
it, I'll, it vividly remember it was a bunch of UCLA guys at um, it's always a this hotel UCLA on Sunset, guy. you know, just on the west side of the 405. And we get up there and there's two rooms and room full of dudes and the girls got one room and I'm in there. And I'm like, this is going to be a shit show, you know, and uh, give them the rules. Hey, no pinching, poking, hitting, smacking, slapping, you know, <laughs> they're going to have a great time. You're going to have a great time. Just have your money ready. And ladies and gentlemen, right. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Um, and sure enough, some jackass smacks the girl on the ass and she didn't take she it. She didn't like it. She didn't like it. So she gave him the fake right and he ducked and she smacked him across the face and turned and walked out. And I was like, well, fellas, it's been real. One of the things that we said <laughs> yeah, is, no smacking, yeah. you know, I said, they're going to get back out here. Right. Just, you got to relax, man. Talk to your boy out here. Right. Yeah. So I go in there. I'm like, ladies, we were. Six minutes in, I got. <laughs> we, she was getting smacked around six minutes in. <laughs> we got to get this done, right? Oh, you know, and it was a smack on the butt or whatever. But they're like, "All right, we'll do it. You mm -hmm. keep that guy." And I was just like, "All right." So we go back out there. They're throwing it down, having a good time. I'm collecting a couple of dollars, <clears throat> put them in the pockets, one, two, three. and uh, they cut it short a little bit. And the guys are going a little crazy. So like, it's me and 18 dudes from UCLA and I got a boom box. Right. And I'm like, right. boys, just unlock that door. Okay. Unlock that door and everything's going to be fine. So I get in there and I said, I'll be right back. And I grabbed the radio and uh, I said, what the fuck are we doing? What are you doing? I mean, my ass is the one that's going to get kicked around the you know, yeah. whole hotel. And uh, we're, like, we're out of here. I'm like, Oh shit, we got to go. And right. so, we're, you know, out the door and I'm like, you better kick them heels off and start running your ass. And I get down to the truck, open the truck. And all of a sudden, you know, you hear the dudes running and mm -hmm. dude just like click, click. And I'm like, ah, fuck. Didn't hit me. Just said, give me that money. And yeah. I said, you can have all that money. Yeah. And yeah. the spoon box. Yeah. If you like, <laughs> it's got triple D batteries, man. <laughs> triple D's. <laughs> Holy shit, Joel! You this just is the this best. Over. It is this is the best beginning of a podcast we've ever had. It is. All right, let's Man, move on. There's, there's, there's been more. There's been a lot more. Gosh, you know, I was in the food count. business for a long time. See, I, that's how I remember you, know, you telling so me. I got to be a big fat guy, and uh, you know, and walked away from the food business. Was creating the obesity that we have in America. Um, right. Company I worked for. Their motto was create craveability. Wow. So no one can eat just one. Yeah. That was our product. It sounds like chips, it was the same right? thing. Are we talking about what, Oreos? Was that Doritos? Or, or, no, no, yeah, Lays. we're talking about uh, no, spices. Pringles. Pringles. Spices and marinades, right? Yeah. No, Frito-Lay. Frito-Lay. Right? Right. PepsiCo, Taco Bell, right? Yeah. All those outlets. And I was probably 320 last time I saw, like, the high weight for me. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, and you're a big guy I was already, depressed. Dude. I yeah. didn't know it. I was miserable. And uh felt like I didn't deserve anything good. Right. Like, I'd stand in my house being like, why? why the fuck do I got this? I'm just a guy, right? I'm just a guy. Right. Yeah. And, uh, it just made me think I got to flush this and start over. Holy and I cow. basically walked away and didn't work for seven, eight months. Yeah. And I painted houses. I, well, you worked. Did just custom so. painting. I mowed yards. I babysat. I taught kids how to cook. I just I did, got away from I'm that. sure the, uh, the stripper stories went over very well at the babysitting. Uh, <laughs> Nobody. Can I see your yeah. resume? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you were a driver yeah. for strippers. Yeah. Like, actually, that was, that was just kind of a cash and carry deal. The IRS doesn't even know about that. Yeah. April fifteenth yeah. coming up. Don't try and get that money. Yeah, so. that babysitting money. <laughs> that babysitting money. No, yeah. I think though. Well, it was a form of babysitting. Yeah, yeah. it was. No, well, that's true. It was. That's they true. were babies. Yeah. Were, oh yeah. Baby girls. Uh, yeah. And there was nothing illegal. Nothing was illegal being done no 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 yeah. no i got mine <laughs> that's right i think uh so it's interesting so you went from and i'm not meaning in a bad way job to job kind of found yourself in kind of like this not lost but kind of like man what do i want to do try a little right. everything how in the hell did you end up at somnomed then i'll yeah. tell you it's funny story because every job that i tried to get i the next job was can you pay me more than that job Right. So I met some guys from Buffalo, being a Buffalo guy, yep. um, and they were in paper, right? So I sold paper over the phone, inside sales. Um, Fun job. <laughs> like, uh, like oh, my God. Paper, paper cuts that. No, are, you, it's not just that. It reminds me of a couple things. Office space yeah. or oh, Dunderman. It was, yeah. it was office space. Oh, yeah. it, was, mm -hmm. it was office space. But Damn. did that and uh, started playing hockey, started losing weight, started feeling good. Yeah. And then, like, the Joelity came back, right? So yes. it was like, I got to get out. I'm an outside salesperson. 
And a uh, guy I played hockey with offered me a job driving a battery truck, doing a battery route. Now, what's a battery truck? I apologize. So I don't know. It's Continental is. batteries. Okay. You gotcha. know, interstate batteries. Gotcha. Right? So yeah. Continental batteries. And I ran a route, <laughs> yeah. sending my orders, and then they delivered batteries, right? Yeah. And he, I'm like, can you pay me more than I'm making now? And he's like, I can give you 30. And I was like, that's more than I'm making now. I'll yeah. sign up Sunday, you know? Yeah. So then uh, did that for a while. He's like, you know, you're too good for this right now. You're, you're right. really doing a <laughs> a dropouts job. Right. And uh, he goes, but we'll give you 40. And I said, even better. Right? <laughs> so did that. And then I met John and Ash in social circles. And uh, my buddy, Brad Powell, one day says, uh, hey, you remember that guy, John? Uh, you think you want to work for him? I'm like, how much is I'm it? like, can you pay me more than I'm making right now? He goes, well, go talk to him. So I talked to, I interviewed with John on a Sunday. He offered me the job on a Tuesday and they paid me more. And I was like, I'm going to go work for Somnimed. This Holy is going to be great. Crap. So no and I background. Get none, in, at, none at all. None at all. Awesome. I knew where my toothbrush was. Right. And I, you know, no, no background at all. So That's Gus awesome. Durrell, God bless him, man. He, he trained me on like, Oral appliance, like right. Somnimed device. Right. And, you know, he goes, this is how you're going to answer the question. If you don't have the answer, just tell him, hold on a second, then yell at me and I'll get you the answer. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm just like, all right, this is going to be good. This, yeah. you know, I know how to answer a phone. I know how to be personable with people yeah. and everything. And sure as shit, man, somebody called up and dropped the, do you know who I am on me? Oh. And uh, I'm not going to name names Please because don't. he's uh, he's known in the circles. And he goes, uh, do you know who I am? I'm like, well, yeah, you just told me that your doctor and uh, this is a dentist in, in Austin, Texas, in California, oh, California, <laughs> in California. And I'm like, how can I help you? He goes, I need that device back in two days. I'm like, well, doctor, we, it's going to take 10 business days. We yeah. got to, you know, there's, you got to get it here first. Right. And you know, that's unacceptable. I'm like, well, I guess we're not the ones for you. Thanks for calling. Right. Yep. And Gus is like, what did you just tell me? <laughs> I was like, I don't, being need, honest, I don't need to be talked to like that. Everybody's human, man. I be agree. nice. You get more, you know, flies with honey than you do with vinegar. Yeah. And, you know, I just, uh, Gus took me under his wing. Was that more of an account in a, you know, I'm geeky like this. So was that still kind of inside sales if you're taking calls? You weren't out. Oh, no. This is like the second day. Like, I think I just filled out HR paperwork and was like, oh, they're like, like answer the, the answer job. the phone. Yeah, and I was like, awesome. thank you for calling Somnomed. This is Joel. How can yeah. I help you? Now, yeah. this was this was literally like the year that Somnomed came in over to the so United this States. So this is the end of seven. Okay. Right? Oh, Beginning wow. of eight is when it really mm. kind of got going. Um but Damn. yeah, we were in Denver. They're headquartered the, in uh, they're, they're, Australia, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, they're still headquartered. Global Australia. headquarters, CEO, Australia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're still probably completely locked down. Nah. <laughs> Literally, finally, <laughs> I'm sure. Finally, I'll, well, I just know it's from UFC. I love UFC, yeah. and Volkanovski just yeah. won the title again. But he's even promoting now that they're they're loosening up. Well, how yeah. so? I guess how many people were part of that? Shoot. Yeah, North America, North what was that America. Team? team at there the point in time six of us was oh, it wow. dallas yet did they have the headquarters oh, we were in denton i mean oh, okay, literally yeah. from my backyard i could go driver pitch and wedge into the back of the lab that's awesome yeah, yeah it was i ride my bike to work yeah I mean, and then <laughs> back the, on the bike again <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> man Dude, loves that bike i love biking man it's a fun time yeah uh, but it got me to and from but um no it was uh it was you know i remember Smackinaw, Scott Mackinaw was the controller. John was in his office. Gussie had his. Bradley was quality control. I was there. Monica answered the phone. Annette, we brought Courtney Snow yeah. in, you know, right out of school. Just, she was a friend. Um, and Brian, Wally, and Annette. And so here Annette we are. Still uh, there. 2022. 2022. Thank you for the update on that date. I forgot it for a minute. Um, what year was that? 2007, 2008. 2008. So we're talking, you know, yeah. 16 years. Mm hmm. Where, how many people are here now part of North America? Annette from that group. No, no, no. Total. Oh, shoot. They probably got 25. I don't know. No, we're at 46. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 46. So, man. I remember the first the first month we did 500 cases. Yep. <laughs> Truett went and got a case of 40s. There and you go. We were busting cases. Yeah. We were doing everything. And uh, we even got Gus in a picture out in front with you know, back to us, Jeez. pouring a little bit out for the homies. But I that was, that was a legendary time, man. The man. first month that the first, the first person I met in the sleep business was Dr. John Remmers. Really? Yeah. And these, what a cool fucking dude. These what guys, a great guy. I mean, dude, yeah. What a good one to meet. Listen to this. Dude. So true. It knows that I have food background. So he's like, yeah. Hey, we got an important meeting coming up. You need to make us get a 
nice table, nice restaurant. Don't worry about it. Just make sure it's good. And it's right. near grapevine because this is yeah. where the meeting's at. I said, no problem. Called a couple of buddies. He's like, oh yeah, we got you set up, you know, private table. Everything's good. You know, take her to take them to, uh, I think it was silver Fox or Ooh. right uh, yeah. over there in grapevine yeah. set us up, pick them up, come to dinner. Right. And I'm just like, all right, dinner's going to be great. Uh -huh. Ah, come on in. I, I want you to meet Dr. John Remmers and his lovely wife was, uh, I always forget. Uh, no, it's a, it's know. a unique name, but beautiful name. Say, right. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, very nice to meet you. Right. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know what you to expect. Know, yeah. I'm just like making sure dinner comes out. Right. Yeah. And, uh, he starts talking and John engages him. He starts talking about the physiology of the airway and about obstructive sleep apnea and development of the, the, uh, mandible and maxilla. Um, and just, I'm sitting there and he would stop and say, do you under, understand all this? I'm like, yeah, I'm picking it up. I'm, That's I'm, cool. I'm picking up what you're laying down. I took physiology. Yeah, My yeah. mom was an OR nurse and I knew I broke enough bones and been yeah, in the You said you'd so. brush your teeth. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I, I had an orthodontist pull four teeth yeah. and pull everything back. And so, um, he was really, really nice. And it yeah. was an awesome time. And the whole thing was like, man, this guy's cool as the other side of the pillow, man. Yeah. He is just like chill. And we go back to drop him off at the, at the hotel. And, uh, you know, get out of the car, shake hands. Oh, very nice to meet you, Dr. Remmers. Oh, call me John, right? And uh, we get back in the truck, and <laughs> I thought John and Gus were going to kiss after they high five. They were so damn excited because we basically got the endorsement from oh, Dr. John Remmers huge. on oral appliance as a solution, right? Nice. A, a dental device. Yeah, early on. Yeah. Right, early on. And I'm like, why are you guys so excited? I mean, he seemed like a pretty nice guy. You have no idea. Yeah, I got no fucking <laughs> idea, yeah. right? And yeah. he goes, he goes, Joel, John, I thought his head was going to pop off his shoulders. He goes, Joel, you know who that was? I'm like, yeah, John Remmers. Yeah, he said, call Remmers. me John. Yeah. Yeah. Call yeah. him Dr. Remmers, I guess. I don't know what. Am I saying something wrong? Gus, he goes, let me talk to him, John. And he goes, uh, if we just talk baseball, you had dinner with Babe Ruth, Hank Aaron, Johnny Bench, He's and Nolan yeah. Ryan. Yeah. He's up there. And I'm like, yeah. no shit. He yeah. goes, basketball, Magic, Michael, right, Bird, right. Irving, yeah. whatever. And I was like, Holy crap. Well, the next day he comes back to our table and now he walks, you know, he's got those boots on. He's got that slank of, yeah. you know, that Kentucky walk. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I'm shaking in my boots. Right. Oh, cause now and, you know and what I'm you like, know. This yeah. guy's like, he's Baby probably he's, kind of a big deal. Everybody's looking at him. Right. Right. And he comes up and I go, man, Dr. Rembrandt's really nice to meet you. Really, really nice to meet you. He's like, Oh, it was very nice to meet you. Dinner was wonderful. He says, you just call me John. Um, yeah. Okay. That's right. what I'm going to call you. Yeah, right. Yeah. Dr. Rimmers. Yeah. And uh, he put his arms around me and Gus and he says, you boys are going to do something real special. And right then it was like, no pressure at all. Like, <laughs> Hey, don't fuck this up. Yeah. And but sure the thing, enough, it the was thing that. that you have Joel that uh, even in your ignorance <clears throat> back then is you were just you. Yeah. And I find a lot of time that um, even the, the physicians that I deal with, they have like these huge names, right? But they, they're tired of being treated like that. Yeah. So I wonder if you put his arm around you because the next day you're like, oh, uh, he knew that somebody got in your ear, which he probably really enjoyed just having a, he's, a conversation. He's just such a cool dude. I got to meet uh, Dr. Remmers a couple of years back. I shared a bourbon with him, or actually a few bourbons with him. Did Don't you uh, get the same did, cup? Did yeah. you do like straws? Well, at the same time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Lady in the Tramp bourbon yeah. sips. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and uh it was here in austin he was here for for a meeting yeah. and uh just absolute great conversation and honestly this much of it was about sleep yeah. i mean it was he just was just they're tired cool of talking talking about yeah. like yeah. they yeah. and i'm i hate to paint with a wide brush but it's true yeah. i mean it was probably such a breath of fresh air but to meet somebody that was just like hey. the great thing about dr remmers is early on he understood and saw and he's a physician mm -hmm. he's not a dentist right um, but he understood and saw the need yep. for oral appliance therapy. He saw the need uh, for an alternative to CPAP. Um, and, and that, you know, it was just, that was his world, just like everybody else was the CPAP yeah. world. And then I think that's what drove him to, to create yep. Zephyr. Right. Yep. And I, I think yep. that he was always thinking, you know, well, he was playing chess. They're agnostic. He I was mean, playing that chess. Was, that was, he was the, playing the chess word. Long... How do we know it's going to work? Yeah. So when I met Joel at uh, that restaurant, he pulls me aside and we're, I think we're having those craft beers. He pulled me aside. He's like, so what do you think? And I was like, I don't know. 
He goes, no, tell me the story. So I kind of told him my background, which I've told a million times, but here's the truth. I never heard of Sonomed, never heard of Prosomnus. I never heard of Panthera. I haven't heard of anybody except Tap. And I was in the sleep industry for years, guys. And it was just like so foreign to me. And you're like, yeah, because mm -hmm. you knew the territory I'd have. <laughs> and you gave me the best advice, which I won't exactly is, share. You were getting ready to. Oh, I just, yeah. man, I was two weeks. Yeah, I think you were two, two or three two weeks, weeks in. It two. was the end of the year. It was, it was two. Yeah, yeah, I started in. Yeah. Got hired in September. Yeah. And we met in October. And uh, you go, hey, man, just, just keep doing what you've always done. This will happen. Yeah. And don't get bogged down. And you gave me the best advice. And so I would go back and tell everybody, you know, just like anything else, like, hey, man, I met Joel. And that got me in a lot of the dentist doors, dentistry. I had the relationships with physicians. Right. I had them for years. And then trying to marry those two. And, and you've been just a huge help. And, again, it didn't hurt that one of my best friends and you got along great. Yeah. He was the government specialist for Edomar. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so he, no, called, he called me and said, hey, uh, Dr. Hedgecock, I want to meet you. Um, do you know Joel? And I said, Oh, that fucker. <laughs> Says it's a story. I hate that guy. I never called Brandon. We actually and met on I a blind date. I hate that guy. I hate that guy. We met on a blind date. And then he was like, Oh, and then he had to change his strategy. So then he <laughs> No, I just jumped in. I went, I hate him too. <laughs> Damn <laughs> that jackass. <laughs> yeah. If, if you could get by with like the the one name, right? It's like, yeah. oh hey, you know Joel? Well, it's true. Like, oh. And I will say this watching you work a room. Um, one of the, the best times I saw you, cause I had to go to a bunch of these dental conferences, which don't get me started. Oh, good times. Uh, good times. Lots of new people. Yeah. yeah <laughs> never the same people. Um, by the way, this is my announcement, official announcement. I'm not doing any more dental ever. Um, but, uh, at iOS, at Brandon's thing, yeah. watching you work. And, and so the joy for me and Waltman was just, we would pull side and be like, watch this guy. <laughs> you, watch him go. Watch you, him go. You knew everybody. And dude. it's just awesome watching you, dude. So that's um, funny. That, and all the things. Yeah. You know, our team that would come from Israel, you yeah. know, and she'd, um, uh, God, I always uh, mess up her name anymore. Just don't um, say it. Though. Anyhow, oh, yeah. um, she comes and she goes, oh, take me around. Show me this. Show me this. And mm -hmm. I take them around and everybody, you know, it's like shaking hands and kissing babies. Like everybody knows you, happy right? You. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And she's like, oh my God, you're like the mayor. You're you were the like mayor. the mayor. <laughs> Listen, I was like, a, that's, that's a good one. I said, mayor. I said, the mayor oh, of dental man. sleep medicine. Mayor that, that's not a bad one. Oh, we need no, a bopper, we need a a bopper sticker. That's no. not a bad one. Um, Cause I will say, you know, uh, but you have in those relationships uh, and hey, man, when I first started going to these, those conferences and you introducing me to people and, and me uh, being with you, I'm not being funny. It said a lot, you know, um, being the new guy that comes into the industry. It's funny how people act because like, oh, I heard about this guy or whatever. And so it was really, it was just an easier transition. So yeah. I've always been appreciative well, thank you. of our relationship, brother. Yeah, thanks, man. Well, how long were you with Somnomed for? Because I see I never even knew four and a half today years. that you worked with Somnomed. Yeah. Four yeah. and a half yeah. years. You were, okay. you were one of the yeah. ground boots. In Dude, that was that was when, you know, I was I I one week went from the East Coast to the West Coast. Yep. Four time zones. Yep. You know, and just it was knocking on doors, getting guys like Neil Seltzer and Jeff Rain in yep. New York and yep. Shit, every everybody across the country, you know, Dave Schwartz. It's funny, a lot of people and, that I've known they <clears> cut their teeth. And what that means, Dan, is you don't actually cut your teeth. <laughs> but they cut their teeth with Sonoman. I mean, Brandon. Oh, yeah. Oh, Walton. Brandon, yeah. you know, he and I went to a hockey game a few weeks back and yeah. um we just kind of talked about it. And it, mm -hmm. it was more like, you know, you're on this path, you can be successful, mm -hmm. you know, you can do really well if you just do the right thing. Yep. Don't be a jackass. Yep. And Sorry, I've been a jackass sometimes, but, uh, you know, oh, you, you got, you got to have some credibility, right? Yep. And that's a, what it's about. And, you know, free's not a price, yeah, <laughs> you know, right. people yeah. that, you know, people that are like, Hey, can't you just give me a couple of those? Well, yeah, but then you can't use them on a patient. That's right. You know? And I, I think the, um, but you've seen times change, meaning, uh, so you told me when your start date was, even I saw it in the industry and back in the day. And I could say this on camera, man, back in the day, Phillips, it was, Hey man, buy eight C pass. We'll throw in two BiPAPs. Yeah. A uh, mask fit. Okay. Let's get a mask, you know, get and it was acceptable yeah. as long as you didn't use the word therefore word free. Yeah. It, we had a promotion. We had, we had this a promotion. and through sunshine act through all these things. I mean, now it's, it's funny. Cause I still have some old timers. 
that are physicians, right? Yeah. That want to get some kind of hookup through something. I'm like, I yeah. can't do that. Yeah. Like, it's not the good old days. It's not the good old days. I know you like those Lucases. Good and for it's, you. <laughs> it's, it's changed a lot. But uh, yeah. at the same time, I think um, working for, you know, the mothership in Israel yep. and, and those guys, being able to be there with them and, mm -hmm. and working for, you know, Gior Yaron, our, our chairman, and, mm -hmm. you know, Gilad. Click and he changed it for all of us uh, when they came on board. So this is going to get geeky because we're kind of geeky into this industry. <clears throat> so I think that that transition from Sonomed to Itamar, Itamar is home sleep testing. Correct. Uh, it's a bigger company than that now, Zoll. But that how is that transition going from calling on dentists and selling a device? Back then they called them appliances. Um, to, to doing, I mean, that's a whole different ball game. But, and I wasn't, I was still focused on the dental side of the business. They were okay. trying to build it. And, okay. um, it was me and Jody and Rebecca Katz. And yeah. then, uh, Rebecca opted out and it was me and Jody. And, and then just we had a, we had a change in leadership. And when Gilad Glick came on and, um, you know, Chris Hallett, um, they really took us to the next level as a professional company. Mm -hmm. Um, and basically said, you know, Joel, you're going to run the dental business. Jody's going to run a, a, her medical territory. And that was really kind of the beginning of the end for that. But I was just like, uh, what? The whole country? And well, they're like, oh, yeah, you can do this. You yeah. can do this. Well, and I'm and like, I can remember our, our talking because I'm very familiar with that background, right? Yeah. HSTs. And I was, I used to sell Stardust, man. And, yeah. and I launched the night one. And I remember when I was talking to you guys, I, and I think you appreciated this ago, you guys either lucked into it or saw the future because they had the very first home sleep testing that was disposable. And during the pandemic, uh, people timing. quit, it's, people quit using everything, but that, and yeah. I was like, you gotta be killing it. It's right. gotta be a, a Harvard business review. Perfect storm. It, it, it's because it's like it's crazy. product timing, oh demand gosh. price. It, it was, was nuts. It was perfect. And, um, I can, uh, kind of like your tickle me Elmo when you were a kid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> perfect time. But that was, that was one that we won on. And you know, that's what I remember telling Gilad one day, um, so a tool Maholtra is going to talk. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I know who he is now. I've yeah. been in the business a long time and, and, uh, he's getting his computer ready and Gilad sitting there and he's like, how are we going to take this company to, you know, 200 million or whatever it was going to be. And, uh, I just kind of like to ease into him and, and get his ear. I said, Hey, Gilad, I said, you know, why I didn't go to kindergarten. He goes, Oh my God, Joel, why didn't you go to the kindergarten? They the said, because I don't fucking play. No. This is, a, this is business, man. This is not like friendness. That. And he goes, Oh my God, this I'm gonna write this. I like this. <laughs> you, you, you. And so a couple of years later, he's like, All right, last chance, man. You yeah. got it. You got to get it to 600,000 or something, whatever the number was. It right. was always, you want more. Oh, Edomar's uh, notorious for and that, by the way. We, we Margins did it, growth. man. We were yeah. the first one, I think in dental, just in the dental space to do a million dollars. I know we were the first one to do Easily. 2 million. Easily. And then we did yeah. 2 point With the watch pat and watch pat one, oh, um, even the 19, stocks and stuff. 19 crushed. Uh, and we, you know, 10 years in, we got acquired and it was the greatest day because all the effort you put into something like that. Yeah. So I was like, going to ask, so you know, you probably knew I was going to ask this, Joel, but I've been part of companies that have been bought and it's been great. I've been part of companies that have been bought not so great. All right. How's it been? It's been great. Okay. Yeah. I'm okay. Uh, an emphatic great. Um, okay. I think the Zoll's a big one. I thought Zoll was coming after appliances <clears throat> next. Think about what they bought. Respicardia. Well, was it Itamar first or Respicardia? First? Respicardia first. Respicardia. So now we're going towards centrals. So yeah. Going for the heart, right? Yeah. Doing a little shock therapy. Then they bought you guys. Now we're doing home sleep testing. Yeah. And I just knew, I said, it's going to be us, Proson. It's going to be somebody. They're it's going gonna, to buy. They're, they're, I, I, going to buy somebody. I got no skin in the game, horse in the race, whatever. Right. Uh, how do you ever, you can put that. But, um, you know, they've given us the autonomy to, to continue doing what we're doing. We're going to continue that. to try and grow our dental space. We got a big number to hit. And oh, yes, you sure. know what? And we'll see what happens. And it's, I will say from the rest of Cardia guys who I'm close to also that got bought out, they were nervous. But, man, it's been... They're happy. In I fact, tell you, just the, improved. The leadership, the the acquisition, and all those transition meetings. You know, our president Shane Brown at the time, mm -hmm. who recently uh, mm -hmm. he left the scene. Um, I mean, they just were very forthright and open about it. Nobody was going to go anywhere unless you chose to to right. go somewhere. Um, and thus far, it's just been, you know, can I we ask keep something the pedal that, to again, the metal, I'm, I'm geeking know? out, uh, and people who are in the industry <clears throat> will love this podcast, but with with Phillips recall and now with the raw materials and issues that ResMed's having off the coast, well, they can't get it. So of course there's no CPAPs. 
as an oral device there's, guy. There's no, around. there's no um, so components for home testing on so, some of these things. And so, and I try to tell people who still want to use night one or use, or, you know, I tell them you can, but Supply if I chain issues, if I'm with a company and I'm putting someone on a HST, I need to know that it works. I need to know that the company's behind here. Zola is coming and buying a company, putting more money, putting more things. Resume. I get, I get probably a resume from oh, resume dude. twice a week. Yeah. So twice a week I get cut want to come join the team. It's I'll, crazy. I'll tell you. And, and obviously <clears throat> we'll talk a little business. We'll talk some numbers. You and I have done that before. I think we should talk some controversial things about home testing. As Let's well. do it. But <clears throat> I was a, a huge user of the apnea links. The watch pass were the first mm -hmm. uh, home sleep testing that I got into and that I bought uh, strictly because I met Joel and because he was good at his job. And because I was too dumb to know any better than to buy it from Joel, than to buy it from Joel for <laughs> some ungodly price that I'm not even going to mention. It was a fair. It was a fair price. It was a fair price because I was willing to pay for it yeah. uh, at the time, and, and, and I, I didn't know any better. That's what a purchase is. Um, <laughs> and now I look back and I'm like, why did I fucking do that? But that's okay. Then I come into the apnea links and one of our sleep physicians, Dr. Wilson, really likes the apnea links because the the portal's really easy to use. It's easy to transmit that information back and forth for interpretations and stuff like that. Uh, but when, when we're running on a very small margin in our home testing company, and this is in our business that does the testing for the cardiologists and sure. the physicians, um, you know, that's a huge difference to pay fifty dollars a month uh for a unit and four dollars a test uh versus um you know, $6,000 per unit and $60 a test or whatever right. the difference. I mean, it's a huge difference. Sure. And so, uh, we, we had like, I want to say 35 apnea links mm -hmm. and, uh, at, at any given time that we were using. And in this last year, they have discontinued warranting yep. any of them. They have discontinued servicing any of them. I didn't know they that. have discontinued selling any of I them. Knew that. It has been a fucking shit show to get uh, just cannulas and parts to even get parts yeah. to even get parts. You know, you might have just one piece that breaks down. Now we were getting our cannulas from a, a, another company and that's fine. But, and I called them and I said, Hey, we have a three year lease agreement. Mm -hmm. We've held up our end. And, and it was amazing to me that that was like, yeah, sorry, who cares? You don't have to pay no more, but we're not, you know. Hey, if you need a solution, yeah. I got a guy. I heard. I got a guy. So we actually have gone to, uh, in the cardiology practices, to using uh, almost exclusively the watch pads. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they're able to get reimbursed more mm -hmm. for them. I like the reports better. Mm -hmm. And I was actually able to find an NMR rep to give me a decent deal. So <laughs> Craig, <laughs> Craig's good, man. Craig Calvin is, he's a, he's a good dude. No, he was a really cool dude. Yeah. He's Canadian. Is he Canadian? He's, no, you couldn't tell. Eh? Yeah. He, <laughs> is that the one who yeah. started and then had to leave? No, no. no. Craig, uh, I'm just kidding. Craig came in from South Carolina. No, he's yeah. a new yeah. area I director. Was, I was yeah. Joking. Yeah. No, I know Craig. No. He's a, he's a good dude, man. Yeah. I'm really glad he moved to Texas. No, no. He's been great to yeah. work with. Yeah, he's but, in Dallas. Um, yeah. Forward. But, you know, it's, it's just, it goes to show again, like the type of service that different companies are providing and how they're backing their product and that kind of stuff. But so Watchpat was, I mean, were they the first one out there to use this PAP technology uh, in terms of not having to have the nasal cannula? Yeah. So, take it you know, <laughs> the, the PAP technology is proprietary to Itamar Medical Period. and it's, it's ours in order to um, it was when it first landed on these shores in the early aughts, right? 2004, 2006. Say, yeah. um, it was a black box. Doctors didn't believe it because how, how can you tell me what's happening yeah, with, with respiratory and... events with a finger sleeve? Uh, yeah. Basically, pulse ox, basically. Well, what they looked at it, right? right? But the PAT signal, we're measuring peripheral arterial tone. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to sound like an ad. So no. anybody needs something, give me a call. No, this is good. Um, we love it, this stuff. There's dude. other devices that claim to have the PAT signal, Yep. which in fact, um, the PAT signal requires the, the fingertip to be fully encapsulated. And that stands for peripheral arterial tone. Tonometry, yeah, tonometry, tone. Yeah. So we're thinking pulsatile volume, yeah. think systolic, diastolic, yeah. right? Lub, dub, lub, dub. That's a good way to know. And that's a good way for our audience to get it. Yeah. Yeah. Systolic, diastolic. Mm -hmm. But it has to be fully encapsulated. That's why you have that hard shell 
yeah. sensor. It has to have equal pressure on all sides. So that pneumo-optic probe that the patient slides on their finger, yeah. when they pull that tab, it actually is going to inflate slightly so it's, it's got equal pressure on all sides. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to expose a piece of adhesive on a non-latex liner. But it's also, it's going to help eliminate venous pooling. So your, your device that has uh, coverage like this and you put tape on it, um, that's not equal pressure on all sides, mm -hmm. okay? And so that's why the PAT signal stands alone, okay? The, the, the real measurement is, um, it's measuring sympathetic tone and autonomic response, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, think of the, the patient that is wearing the sensor and they have a respiratory event. I'll reenact one. I've done this before. So everybody get ready. So the patient that's laying there, right? And then. Yep. Mm -hmm. What happens? Well, the cessation of breath is a sympathetic activation that tells everything. Okay. This is what's happening. Fight or flight, yeah. The fight or flight moment is where the brain says, Hey, bring all the blood back to the core, protect my, my organs. Right. Mm -hmm. We're facing oxidative stress. I don't care about my fingers and toes. Right. And then what happens? You have that drive, that sympathetic drive, which is the heart racing mm -hmm. and the brain goes, Hey, I'm not getting oxygen. So that's where the arousal occurs. <laughs> you know, you have that opening of the, of the airway. And then we go back into that same. So the, the measurement is really what's that full pat signal. Right. Mm -hmm. And that is that constant measurement of pulsatile volume, the amplitude. So what's the strength and range of that signal pinging back to the device? Um, what's happening with oxygen and what's happening to pulse. And that's how we're really kind of simplifying scoring the, yeah. the, the data. Right. But that continuous cycle is what is taxing on the cardiovascular system. 100%. It's why cardiology should be the first one to, to test yeah. patients. Right. Yeah. Um, I showed, I showed you that picture mm -hmm. and that says it all. I think the, um, um, the accuracy of that, is because we're not measuring airflow, we're measuring physiology. Mm -hmm. And what, what's the body do autonomically to get back to homeostasis? It yeah. took it to a new level from the HSTs that I brought in, what I was brought into Stardust, and then even the night one, which was supposed to be Alice, right? Night yeah. one, this technology, but it always focused on what? What'd you just say? We get taught in, because we deal with obstructive sleep <clears> apnea and we're dealing with oral devices, the breathing, breathing, the physiology, that you just described is so up here that the only time they were getting that back in the day, guys, is an in lab. Right. That's it. People were so focused on, well, what about the nose? What about the airway? What about this? So the other ones that were out there were still chest straps, still, you know, combining. It wasn't as confining as, as an in lab, but still there was so many room for air. Right. Lots of, and I'm not talking about a, I are. There was so air. room for air that they couldn't, it wasn't truly measurable. And that's why I was early on going, HSTs will never last. They'll yeah. never last. They'll never last. Of course. <laughs> what a Just like everything I do. Yeah. Is, huh? Oh yeah. yeah. You know, Apple, but, <laughs> yeah. um, Netflix. But, Who wants to buy a farm? <laughs> but to see that technology go uh -huh. and go. I've always been a big fan. I didn't purchase, but I've always been a big fan of the watch pad because I knew the people selling it. Yeah. And I know that sounds funny. I knew the people selling Phillips. I know the people selling ResMed. And there's certain areas of the country where I will say, hey, man, talk to this ResMed rep. Certain areas where I'll go, hey, talk to this NMR rep. Uh -huh. Because it is the people. Now, the technologies, in my opinion, and please jump in. You should. From a Watermark, from a Phillips, from a ResMed, from this, from the Night Owl now, from the new rings. I still think, in my opinion, that Itamar, from what I've seen out there, is still... Um, with what Brandon just said, as far as having the support, having the backing, having that, it's not the newest technology, but, but we, we, we've, we've continued to evolve it. I think the, the changes that we've made over the last, you know, I'll be and, 11 years in yeah. September for me, um, we have continued to evolve and, and mm -hmm. rethink how we're doing things. You know, that central plus sensor yeah. came up yeah. at one of our meetings where it's like, what else can we think of? Right. And um, the disposable one back in Boston, That's I guess correct. it was that 15, still is. That, 15 or 16 was, and we were in Boston yeah. and we're in, That's still in a crazy. meeting with just everybody on the team. And it was like, what can we come up with next? And it's like, what if we had a throwaway, you know, and Elon Levine, who is an awesome dude who's uh, based in Israel, he says, maybe, you know, yeah. and it's like, 
we nobody ever threw out like an idea that was like poo pooed. It was like, well, let's think about it. Could we? Could we? Yeah. And and that's how I think the one thing with all those other devices, um, you know, good as they are or as bad as they are, um, they're still in the same packaging, recording the same channels. And they haven't evolved. They might have gotten smaller a little bit. Right. Um, I think the in all fairness, I do think. Uh, and, and I'll do this from time. Watermark has added some things, but it's still, the design is still the same. Here's the question. The I'm design not, is still I'm the same. You, Brandon. It's, the design is still the same. Even if they keep the cannula in all night, can <laughs> an airflow based device fail? Yeah. How? Mouth breathe. Yeah. That's simple. the answer. That's well, it. I tell so every it, ENT. I'm glad I, I got that right. Yeah. So I tell every <laughs> ENT, I go <laughs> in for nose. You didn't prep me before that <laughs> you were going to well, ask me fucking questions. But I love, I love working with it's the ENTs, test. even here in town. One of the questions I ask them, because I'm an idiot. I'm like, is it fair to say that if, if your nose isn't working, would a CPAP work? And they're like, no, it wouldn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. The, so the, the same thing. And a lot of patients, and a lot of patients mouth breathe. Yeah. yeah. And the yeah. dentist, the dentist ENT is like the perfect storm. Throwing yep. a cardiologist. Yep. You'd all have so many damn patients, yeah. you wouldn't know what to do. Now, yeah. I, you know, I, I'll say that, and, and again, I love the watch pad. I love their reporting more than any other report out there. I think the way that it breaks it down makes it so easy to explain to patients, yeah. uh, specifically when we're working with patients on this is what's happening, mm -hmm. you know, day in and day out or, or every night while you sleep. Um, I think the accuracy is is there. And I know we can argue about accuracy and we can say, well, there's errors and maybe maybe some more retests and some of the other ones and that kind of stuff. The truth is, is home testing has come a long way with all of the home tests out there. Oh, yeah. And the yeah. fact that we have the home testing, and they've all been tested next to PSG and, and they're all Comparable. close enough. Comparable. They're all close enough Comparable. that we can get a diagnosis. Um, and, and so then it's coming down to... Uh, you know, picking and choosing what works for you and your patients. I think yeah. I, I got a question. How many times have you put that little probe on your penis? <laughs> not once, <laughs> no? not no? once, not no? even as a gag. No. I mean, you know, you know, you know how is, small that thing is, this the, is the, the probe. I mean, the probe, you know, no, I, yeah. this is why I love, God, man, what I this can't, is why I love our that's podcast. Why, that's why I, I don't just, pee in a Coke bottle. Well, I pee in a Gatorade bottle. Oh, okay. 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 I'm going to tell you right now, Come on, uh, I'm going to bring it back. Cause Brandon was hitting on something. That's what I love about you, by the way. I'm like with you all the way that you did. <laughs> and then it's like he's you're that. Exit, he's that. It gets too it's like the first time he put it on his wrist or his ankle and tried to put it on his big toe. He's yeah, like, big yeah. toe don't fit. Big toe. So my question is this though, guys, I think we've made it easy. One of the common themes in our industry right now is we've got to make it easier for the patient. We, we've got to put ourselves and you kind of made a joke about it, but it's so true. The first night you ever got one, you had a few drinks and it was kind of difficult just to, to maneuver. What I found with the first, with WatchPat before anybody, it was just simple. We got to make it easier for the patient. Cause I can remember having to deal with, okay, where do we put this? Because we're dealing with something serious because that can be the first indicator of many issues, but you're going to know if they need to then go to an in lab for severe or yeah. damn near centrals or heart issues, which I love. That's why it did. Yeah. Systolic and diastolic was so important, but it wasn't even really being measured in other times. They just kept worrying about the airflow. So I, I'm a big fan. Again, I'm not a purchaser, right? I don't well, have the decision to. But. So I'd like to get into that a little bit and, and just kind of see from your guys' side of the, uh, of the industry. And obviously coming from, um, you know, Itamar, this might be like asking Pfizer, should everybody be vaccinated? Um, <laughs> the dental industry, yeah. you know, this decision to go after dentistry, knowing that oral appliances are there. Uh, but there's been uh, quite a bit of conflict and and turmoil and uh, turf warring between the physicians mm -hmm. and between the dentists and right. between the sleep labs and between on who should be doing tests, who can right. do tests, is it legal to do tests? What are the insurance gonna companies going to yep. pay for? Where where has Itamar kind of stood on this? It's interesting because they're they're largely a medical company, uh, but they have this. Well, Zoll is very uh, large. <laughs> yeah, but then they Zola have this, Itamar Medical. This I'll dental, give you my new cards. Yeah. This yeah. dental division. Yeah. This massive dental division. It's led by three we're, people. We're trying. We're trying really hard, yeah. man. We are you building know, it. Uh, where where if have they build, they if you of, build it, they will come, right? Where have they sat on all, all this kind of controversy? So when uh, when because uh, you've been doing it long enough. Yeah. So them. I approached them when um, they DSM last year came out with their position on yep. home sleep testing, and, and Dave Schwartz called and said, "Hey, yep. you know, can you get them to say something?" Yep. And I walked it up the ladder and. Uh, 
got shot down. And no, he said, look, Joel, you know, the industry, you mm -hmm. know, we're not going to, yep. you know, forsake 40 million for yeah, two, two and a half million. Yeah. So, you know, that you're going to take tomatoes, right? Right. And you could say what you like, but we're not going to have a corporate statement. And I understand that. So yeah. my, my whole take on it is it's really a piss and match over semantics, right? Yep. Whether you uh, distribute, prescribe, administer, dispense, um, you know, give it to the patient, whatever, whatever word you want to use about getting that patient to take a test. Um, my argument is always going to be that if you're not, if you don't have enough stones to defend yourself as a, a clinician, you know, you're a doctor, yeah. right? If I'm not mistaken, you're he a is. doctorate, right? He is. Just a dentist. <laughs> Just, He's a doctor. That, that's, that's the biggest bunch of shit. Here's the thing. It's great. And this movie, is, this yeah. is what I always say, doctor. Yeah. You can, you call can me, call me Brandon. Brandon. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Hedgehog. Uh, and I'm going to be scared next time. I'll be like, hey, Brandon. He's like, why are you calling me Brandon? You know, I, it, you know, you call me doctor. Right? No, I call him no. a lot worse. Here, so here, here it is. Here's your argument as, as a dental professional that is trained in sleep yes. or, or trained in treating that sleep patient with therapy. Right. You can write a prescription for a class one narcotic. Correct. You yep. can sedate a patient. Absolutely. Anesthetize a patient. Correct. Right. Otherwise, affect, drill, fill, cut, and mm -hmm. screw the yep. craniofacial structure. Correct. Right now, but you can't write a. Now you. you're not an oncologist. Nope. But you're the only fucker looking for oral cancer. Oral cancer. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you know who gets oral cancer? The people who don't go to the dentist. That's right, Brandon. That's yeah. a good answer, and I didn't even tee that one up for no. you. Dad, That's, you that is that? exactly right. Yeah. The only people that get oral cancer are fools that don't go to the dentist, because the only one looking for it. Is dentist. the dentist, yep. but they're not an oncologist. Now, if you find a case of oral cancer, yep. what do you do? Send it for a biopsy, send it to the oncologist. And you get the specialist, specialist yep. involved. And I get, yep. So why it's can't, why can't, I know, I love it. why can't a dentist that systematically screens patients mm -hmm. perform the test to not collect only, the data? Not only for uh, oral cancer and those types of things. We also systematically screen for blood pressure. Uh, you know, uh, you screen saliva, medical history, you saliva, salivary DNA, DNA, DNA testing, right? you know, all these other types of things too. Breast implants. But, yeah, I screen them. <laughs> he screens for all those, oh, but sorry. that's the, that's the whole point is. So if you systematically screen and you have an easy to use solution that that patient's willing to take that it. and step. It's not a basic. It's and, not a basic. And here's the thing. It's you know what? Basic. At least we can take a look at it because the one thing, and you know, this is going to be a dead, a, a being a dead horse is the repeat record. I always say is you can't manage it till you measure it. You're not going to yeah, manage right. that blood pressure until you measure it for right. some sustained time. I just did my blood work and I, I actually called my doctor. And I sent him a note. I'm like, Hey man, are you sure those are my numbers? Because <laughs> where we started from to where we're at, it's great. What, and it makes what me have you feel, been doing to make it better? Um, taking the medication. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I being really compliant. quit eating sandwiches. I cut out yeah. Coke. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, I didn't know you had a and, Coke yeah. problem. No, it was a Coca Cola oh, problem. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I yeah. appreciate your honesty. That was really <laughs> the Coke problem was back. No, in, speaking of Coke, back oh, in man. the eighties, man. Great, you know, he was so honest. <laughs> Damn, I was. Honestly, uh, he's probably been the most honest. Uh, honesty's best. So awesome. you know, him and you, Ben Brock. You know, when you're the oldest guy in in the group uh, and you're going to a nightclub, and uh, no, 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 an actual nightclub. Mm -hmm. I was in Cancun last week, and I get pulled over. They pat me down. And because I'm fucking 40 and have back problems, I'm like, yeah, right around midnight, my back's going to flare up. I'm going to need some Advil and maybe some Tylenol. So I've got that in my pocket. So I'm like ready to go. So I get halfway through the night, I can pop a couple of pay pills. I can keep rolling. And the guy put like, he passed me down and feels the pills, the pills. Is it? And he's like, no, no, senor, no medicinas. And I said, no, it's Tylenol, dude. And he's like, no, 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 senor. Like I get stopped. Like everybody goes through <laughs> aspirin for fucking Tylenol and Advil. And he takes, and he like literally, then he passed me out again. He finds another one. And I'm like, Oh, I thought I had one. So <laughs> like fucking, they a. just want you to so, buy some more. I'm like, now I'm going to have to drink. So now, <laughs> now I'm going to have to drink. So now you're in Cancun. I'm like sorts. going to, and you know, these places, it's gotta be I, the guy fucking right outside the bathroom is like selling cocaine. <laughs> Like, hey, did that help your back? <laughs> I'm like, so I can't bring in. I it can't didn't bring help in. his twitch. I can. Oh, Jesus. So at the donkey show, how does it? <laughs> so when you go in, that's, that's enough. Okay. Of you. Sorry. Uh, so they still I, they still have those. I'm, I'm with you, a hundred percent on this, and I agree with you. However, we also know that 
that there's politics in this. Ooh, so y'all are gonna let me talk in a second. I it's totally politics. And 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 I, I and I hate and so we get into this, and obviously I work with lots of dentists, and and there's the issue of one, uh we're we're playing in a medical insurance world. And if you're dealing with a medical insurance business, unfortunately, you have to follow certain medical insurance rules. Right. Okay. Uh, and and two, um, we're playing in the medical world with physicians where many of our businesses depend on physician referrals. Sure. And so you've got to kind of navigate that ball game as yep. well. And, and this is where it gets frustrating for the dentists that are trying to do this because uh, at the end of the day, we want to help our patients. We see our patients, we see the issue, we want to make it convenient for them. This whole sleep world is like a black hole of, you know, a patient needs to be screened and tested and diagnosed and treated. And anywhere in there, they just might disappear, Yeah, you know, and, into this. And so um, I, I guess that's where it gets really frustrating is because I know, I know you guys are like, hey, yeah, no, you got to, you got to just test your patient, take care of your patient. And I'm like, yeah, we got to test your patient, take care of the patient. But then the implications of that, if the insurance doesn't pay you for your appliance, if the insurance, uh, you know, does an audit, which I've been audited multiple times, um, if sleep physicians stop referring to you or start, you know, you got to kind of deal with those side things too. Yeah. And and it's like so frustrating that it isn't just about making it easy for patients. So, you know, the, so, the, the, the hard yeah. part is the, the difficult part is, I think, is that you know, it's the medical insurance industry wagging the dog. So, and it's yeah, like, yeah. here's the thing you could all the statistics and you've seen them, right? How many, how many billions of dollars can be saved if you just help patients, uh, you know, so, manage their sleep, improve diabetes, yeah, improve yeah. weight, improve all right. cardiovascular you know, health. One of but, the things, one, you know, one of the things that I think separates just my background and, and, and maybe what I offer is I was director of managed care for a very large company over, you know, the nation. And I have the, like these insights. I'm still part of monthly meetings and it's amazing. Uh, I'm going to choose my words very carefully. So David and I are, are good buddies, Schwartz, and I brought him down to Arizona for our Psalm Summit. And one of the things I wanted to attack is I brought physicians, other people brought dentists, and I wanted to talk about how we could work together. And I really wanted to tackle the HST. I think that's around the time he called you, like, how much can I truly say? What can I, you know, because I was still at that time, that was last summer, trying to really kind of grasp, like, how right. can we do this? Do we need to get a lobbyist? Uh, do we need to get somebody in there? Because I can tell you right now that in the state of Texas, most recently, I met with Brandon's people today face to face. I sent out an email. They, they changed the rules. It's like my older brother playing a, a game. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's I'm like about oh, no, to new, win. New change. So as soon as we would get close to the finish line with HSTs, something would change. Yeah. And and I'll, I'll say it right now, it's Move, United Healthcare. Moving target. And and, and, it, and it's so frustrating because right when I think I figured out and I'm working with my customers and I'm working with the physician and I finally got it figured out and we get a couple pushed through. Once we get them pushed through, it's, it's almost like a signal goes up and like, Albert's figured it out down there. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it yeah. gets, change it up. But they do. They And, and, and the so, closer. So it's... <laughs> It, it it's 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 frustrating for me, but I'm just a manufacturer. It's like when the black it's frustrating for you. You're just a manufacturer. Okay. He owns the business. Oh, uh, it's got so it. hearing from you is so important in us having empathy and going, oh crap, and that helps me become a better salesperson. But at the same time, because for me it's frustrating because I'm dealing with all different doctors and dentists. But man, <laughs> if it was my business, so here's the big question. Here's the big question. Do I ever Am I supposed to be wearing change? a hat? No. Okay. Just making sure. Do you okay. ever think short shorts? Yes. But, um, do you ever think it'll change? It's a, by the time you leave Seoul, do you think it'll change? I'm curious. Loaded question. Can I answer for me? Sure. I think it's going to change. And I think I, it's going to change with, with change. newer technology, which I'm not allowed to talk about, but newer technology just in 2023 coming out that my company oh. is producing. I think it's going to change the whole game. I think it should, and I, I would hope it game. would. But you know, the the thing is, it's it's kind of like this. You know, how many millions of dollars did the CEO of United Healthcare make? How much? Yeah. How much? How many yachts does yeah. the? Yeah. You know, how many homes does the the yeah. chairman of the board of? He's you know, talking Blue Cross about Blue Shield. If shots are on. It's him. You know, how many houses does he got to have? Right. Mm -hmm. There's got to be some some equity or. Ec Equability. I'm making up words. How about accountability? Oh, There's no accountability. But now you sound like a socialist. No, well, well, I better not. I better not. Because <laughs> Wait a second. He said he was from fair. Buffalo. <laughs> Get a rope. 
<laughs> equitability is a made of a fair, fair strategy. No, no, word. the one my buddy Bart Bennett made up the best one. Right. It's a. Uh, legitimatized Legitimatized. man it's legitimatized i mean i mean that means it's legit right yeah he goes because legitimatize ain't a word so equability so i'm glad you did i'm well not glad i was hoping you would answer that i will tell you that i do i i do think it's it's gonna gonna, it's got to because here's the thing it's it's kind of like especially now the way things are now thank you and keeping people from being healthy we all know what to (laughs) yeah Dude, I made no, it. No helmets bats. on a bike. Yeah. Come on, man. No, Are you yeah. kidding me? I, I yeah. Think about it. There's no like, and I'm like, who else does uh, not? I mean, I'm banging the drum. Obviously, I'm, I'm with you guys, and I hate to to be a pessimist about this. You and be a pessimist. I'm, I'm typically not a pessimist. Actually, am I negative? I'm not. More of a protagonist, maybe. Yeah, maybe. No, he's. I apparently I don't know you well enough. I don't know. Damn, I, I, I don't. I have never seen you be. Negative. I'm not, you know, I'm, PMA, I'm generally a man. positive a person. I think there's ways to work through this and around this, but rather sure. I, I worry sometimes that the position that the AADSM is taking, uh, no offense to Dave, I love Dave. Well, he's no um, longer in charge. So and and whoever was before him or after him, which I don't love. Um, but <laughs> I don't, I don't want to tell you the story that happened to me in December, but We'll do that off camera. Yeah, we could do that off camera. Or we could do it on camera (laughs) and then cut it. Um, The, I worry sometimes that the positions that are being taken are maybe uh, instead of trying to uh, bridge the gap are causing further divide. Yeah. Um, I call it dentist on uh, Dennis crime. uh, Well, it's, it's, but it's not dentist on Dennis as much as it's dentist or dentist groups against physicians. You know, when we have this position okay. as a dental group that says, uh, you know, the physicians aren't doing it and we need to be able to do it and da, 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 da. And that's been their stance for the longest time, regardless of whether we agree with it or not, or whether it's right or not for patients, there's, there's a huge, I mean, we're talking about the AADSM is this big compared to the medical world. Uh, right. I mean, it's just that big. And, and it, as someone who works in physician offices with <laughs> physicians on a daily basis, yep. Um, and even though there's no CPAPs, I still see working with sleep physicians in their offices, um, certain ones are very, com- very ready and willing and working with oral mm-hmm. appliances, but there's certain other ones who still do not send a single one. Agree. And, but, but hold on. But that it, would be it, even it, if there wasn't this. I'm, I, and the testing is a whole nother story. Because I have, I've been doing this long enough, not the world. But, device, is, it, but is it education for the physician? Because now now that they know there's a shortage of therapy, they're like, go. well, maybe you got to use oral. And you know, it's, it's always, it's so always the whiff them. To this morning, I met with some. It's always the whiff them. When they could figure out what it's in for them and then me telling them simply, and I'll give my secret out, um, that it's just rescue therapy. For right now, there is no CPAP. So... With them. You just What's give it, it a try. Me? I get it. Now. Yeah, with them. Yeah. Because they want to know they're so tied in, and we might have to cut this out. Every doctor who's been writing CPAPs is tied in some way. Right. Either tied into a national or they get a side deal. I had to explain to somebody in Brandon's group today, like, do you not know that so-and-so and so-and-so, they're part owner of so-and-so? And they're like, how do you know that? Because I am. Like, I know. <laughs> DMEs been in, have been uh, yeah. around for years. I've been in the business. Yeah. 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 And so think about their resupply. You don't get resupply with a sleep device. You don't. An oral device will actually help you sleep, have more efficacy and, and compliance. And hear me out. I don't think it's all right for everybody. I, th- I do think there's a threshold. Mild, moderate's fine. But when there's nothing to be had, and it's simple education. Something's better than There nothing. was a threat, and I'm almost done. When AADSM and AASM first started, and they decided to butt each other's conferences together, there was a pissing contest. And a lot of men were involved. A lot of white old men were involved and they wanted to be right. And there's still that bad blood and old white men that are still in charge of said group. So they don't want to, it's like the Hatfield and McCoys. So try to bridge that gap. Not going to name names on that? No, I won't. Okay. Well, that jackass who was running both organizations out of the same building, answering the same phone, if it rang on the ADSM. No, you're good. Thanks for calling ADSM. Yep. The ASM. Thanks for calling yep. ASM. He's basically walking the dog he and was. had the AADSM on the leash. Yep. Meanwhile, changing the targets, changing everything. You realize how many years that was. God bless him. Yeah. I, yeah. You know. I'm glad you said that. God bless him because I don't. <laughs> so figuring, navigating through I'm that world, either. right? Navigating yeah. through that world has been interesting. So with all that said, there's always something in it for him. Brandon, for years, 
the person you're probably thought about that won't give you a referral has just been so conditioned and so loyal. Yeah. And so trained. Cause, that, cause I'm going to tell you right now, trained to, that to resupply money, yeah. buddy, it is real. And, and walk, working with Ben today going, yeah. they have CPAPs that have been up. My father still gets resupplies. Now he wears it, but it's for years. Mm. I mean, closets full of resupply. Who's getting, but even now, even now, insurance know, is paying for it. Right? I know that there are, uh, cardiologists that are doing testing mm -hmm. because we're doing their testing right? and patients are getting diagnosed. Right. I know that they don't have any, uh, interest or stock in CPAP. Mm -hmm. They just work for a large cardiology group. Sure. They're not a sleep doctor mm -hmm. necessarily. And, um, even with that, and even knowing that CPAPs are taking six to eight months to get and even, and then they're getting them from China and mm -hmm. all that, mm -hmm. they still, you know, don't believe mm -hmm. in the oral device. They still they, don't believe. They know it's there. They know it's an option. Right. They still don't believe in it. But you're not going to win. A, They've been convinced that PAP is the gold standard. It's always, and that's the word. Or even, or and, and, medical, and, and this uh, goes into a whole other topic. We uh, maybe need to it. have a, an attorney yeah. on the show to talk about medical legal liability. Right. Um, either that or your, your my buddy, Marty. Um, is, was he, is he the new driver of the strippers? <laughs> no, oh. the, the, Who's Marty? Because cause physicians are so concerned about medical le legal liability. Yep. They're concerned if they don't prescribe CPAP that they have the potential to have medical or, or legal recourse if something goes wrong. But I them, love, right? so I, I, I converted a doctor over yeah. recently, just said, said, can I show you the same document that you've always signed? Will you go down two bullet points? Actually, it's the third point that basically says that an oral appliance is equivalent. Teaching them that, because they're so conditioned, a lot of them love don't it. even look at that. Right? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm in a class. I'm, I'm with just, you. I'm with you. I just, uh, yeah. I think that, you know, you've obviously seen this um, controversy from your standpoint in 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 the sleep testing world with Itamar. Yep. But at the same both, time, both you've, sides. You've I mean, con continued to see the dental division of Itamar grow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's 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 getting them to. Um, it ain't for lack of effort, right? And so I think the the opportunity to help more patients, you know. Yeah sending them to a third party service, sending them to, uh, let me send you the sleep doc. You, you create your own pitfalls that they're going to fall off and fall into that abyss where all of a sudden, poof, they disappear. Yeah. But if you got somebody that is willing to, that you create the sense of urgency sure. using that systemic systematic screening, um, create that sense of urgency and say, Hey, look, it might be worth putting a couple bucks in the game, you know, and everybody, well, does my medical insurance cover it? Well, you haven't made your deductible, so we're going to charge you full Monty, which is going to be $1,200 or $800, whatever that might be. Um, give us a couple, a few hundred dollars and, you know, we'll get you tested. At least we'll know what we're looking at. And then we could take some some steps to to get medical insurance involved. Not being on that operation side, I, I just try and keep it simple because literally I'm with you. you screen a patient Monday, you send them home Monday night with a test. They do the test. You got a result Tuesday. Yep. You share it with a specialist to get the interpretation Wednesday. Hey, man, you're taking impressions or scans and, you know, you're helping that patient control their, their health yep. a little bit more rather than being the monkey that has to follow the banana on, well, you know, said it best. on the insurance. I, I, so I, uh, again, this is what I mean. I don't think you're pessimist. He looks at it as a black hole. I look at it as that we got to get more stickiness. And so that's been part of my challenge is teaching groups to work together. So in Tulsa, I have an amazing sleep dentist up there, Carrie Sessom, and I've got an amazing sleep doctor, Michael Noonan. And then I have the ENT group. I have the heart. I have the, the clinics there. And we meet once a month. And you got the for, DME side of it for too. For happy hour. Yep. Philip Zellner. Yep. And it's in it. The watching the stick, I have ENTs there. I have, um, uh, I have, uh, ResMed shows up. I have FMP shows up. I have Phillips rep show up. I have Inspire show up and we all say, listen, we're in this, that one patient that gets screened from Carrie Sessom or they go to a clinic, let's get them into this so we can treat them somehow. Yeah. So in a, in a real sense, I think what, what's made, uh, uh, my business grow is that it's saying that I don't think that this is the only thing, but I do think that it's a step that has never been looked at before, at least in my territory, but that now it's being addressed and goes back to you. I think that HSTs,
plays such a huge role. I do believe, and I'll put it on film or whatever we're doing, streaming, that it will change. I, yeah. I just, I, it, it has to change. We have to give to the ability to a, a diplomate, to a certified sleep, to, there's got to be some kind of credential. Yeah, but that multidisciplinary they, approach, you know, and, and even involve, you know, a nutritionist or somewhere. Oh, I yeah. mean, there's, there's yeah. so many. There was a doc out in um, Calabasas, California years ago, and he had set up the center and it was like, it was like the hub and spoke, right? Yeah. And so in one building, Love they it. had seven offices. Yeah. And if it was, um, you know, the nutritionist, the ENT, right. the you know, whoever. I'll give right? a shout out. N Bariatric. N Nidravina in yeah. San Antonio. They are amazing. It's a neurologist who is an expert in, in sleep, but they, they have, they hired a dentist three days a week. A dentist they have a physical therapist in there. They have three yep. nurse practitioners the, yep. in it is a hub. So you go in there. And, and it's part DME too. I mean, they, they handle everything, man. Yeah, they don't want you it, it it's hard to, the, to let them go out. Looking at everything comprehensively yeah. and, and looking at all systems as opposed to, cause that's, that's one of the, the, narrow. the downfalls of, of medicine is, is everybody has their little specialty. So you go to the endocrine doc and they're just looking at it from this standpoint. And then you go to the GI doc and they're just looking at it from this standpoint right. as opposed to, you know, how is everything working together? Yeah. You know how many times I see patients that are taking a med from this doc and a med from that doc and a med from that doc. And, and they, they never, they all can, never consider them. <laughs> how they work together yeah you know yeah. um it's it's kind of crazy um to see that but anyway so what's next for joel we did with soft med we jumped into itamar they Hopefully, paid you more who's who's, who's they, paying you more next yeah who's I, that? zol did apparently zol, zol came uh, in and kept them yeah, yeah they're uh no i i really would like to see this to the end and and yeah. build it and continue to build it i think there's there's a lot to do um Heck i yeah. would have never thought years ago that i was going to be with some, uh, a company for 10 years but yeah. you know you find your passion sure um you know Drinking. i was i was fortunate to to yep. find my passion that day i met john remmers yep. um you know, I, I tell the story in front of groups and I've told you the story. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, Bruce Barrett is the one that changed my life because, yeah. you know, Bruce Barrett is a productive dentist guy, right? Yeah. And he's still a cool guy. And every time yeah. I see him, I said, thank you, man. Thank you for lighting my fire because that's cool. he got up on that, that meeting and basically put up a, a slide. He's doing a slideshow and everybody, he's very gregarious. Yeah. Yeah. He says, uh, you know, puts up a slide, says, uh, if you were found dead in Texas a hundred years ago and you didn't have a noose around your neck or a bullet wound or an arrow sticking out of you, you died of natural causes. And everybody chuckled, including me. And um, then he flipped the slide and he put cardiovascular disease, diabetes, hypertension, um, obesity, um, the litany of comorbidities that goes with it. And it, it was like, it lit, it was like the light through the stained glass in when Belushi says the band, right? There the you Blues go. Brothers. Yeah, it was like it shined down on me. And I had this coin I would carry because um, it was my mom's angel coin. Right. And I was just like, I had it and it was my little worry coin. Yeah. And it was like, I read her ME report because my yeah. mom had died six months prior to me yeah. getting in this business. And I sold the CPAP machine for 40 bucks, yeah. not knowing what it was, not knowing that she had it. And wow. um, it really that's what really kind of made me understand that there's a big problem out there that we could be a part of a solution Absolutely. and it, it changed the way I look at everything. And, um, I think the, that gave me the passion of talking to people about it, you know, shit, pull my string. I'll wear you out. <laughs> you know, I just, and that's the thing. There's a lot of people that, you know, whether you're at meetings or, or at seminars and, They'll say, you know what, my uncle, my mm -hmm. father-in-law, somebody, everybody, everybody this, knows yeah. somebody, everybody's got a story. And, right. you know, I shared you that picture with my, my dad, my dad died in February on Super Bowl Sunday. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, on his wrist was OSA risk, fall risk. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever tested him when he had his two knees replaced back seven years ago, six and a half years ago. Um, he's laying there and I'm just sitting there reading a the book, you know listen to him snore, listen to him obstruct and the team of surgeon come in and the PA and the assistant point therapist, right? Comes, no, yeah. they're, they're, uh, it's crazy. Oh, you're doing well, Mr. Blix. You're doing really good. Everything's looking right. good. They look at the scars and as they're leaving and I'm again, just a guy jeans and a sweatshirt. I said, uh, did anybody think to, to test him for obstructive sleep apnea? And they look, like, who's that guy? I'm like, I'm asking, is there any reason you did not test him? Because I know he hasn't had a sleep test. 
She said, well, his neck's not big enough. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Well, this is in a hospital. I've, I've, counted, oh. I've counted 15 events in the last half hour. So I'm going to guess his AHI is probably about 30. Yeah. And he's probably desetting. I know I'm hearing him deset. Because I'm watching he's the baby. He's hooked the, up to the pulse. You know, it's getting down to 85. Yeah, and nobody's yeah. come in. So um, you had to rethink about your systematic screening. And I'm not going to name names, but a BSW location. Whoa, whoa, okay. And uh, and they make trailer hitches too, I think, right? <laughs> BSW trailer yeah. hitches. Uh, um, but no, that was that was it. But, mm -hmm. you know, and I tested him and he and his companion, you know, Jane was better snorer than him, but they both had AHIs over 50. Yeah. And what did they want to do? Nothing. Tried to get him to see somebody for an appliance. Even just do that. He goes, I don't want to do that. Yeah. So he slept in a recliner. Yeah. That age, man. And so it's, it's really, well, I think all, the, the opportunity to, yeah. to find your, yeah. your want to, well, it's been awesome. And, and you know, the follow up, and I, you know, I don't want to, uh, but I often wonder, my grandpa died at 63 and he was never tested yeah. and had a heart attack in his sleep. And had other medical problems, but um, I can't help but think that if he wore a CPAP or an appliance, that yeah. he might not be here today, but he probably would have lived to 70 or 72. That's my mother. Instead yeah. of 63, yeah. you know? So. I mean, it's so funny how we're all tied. And thanks for sharing that, by yeah. the way. And, and I know that we had reached out right afterwards. So um, sorry for your loss. You know, we're all tied to either family members or somebody, somebody, you know, affected. everybody. Yeah. And yeah. it's, it's not, you know, it's the thing that I'll ever always say is it's not like 10 degrees of separation. It's right. two or three degrees. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, somebody, you know, from church or from work or somebody else. Brandon doesn't go to church. Well, when we're talking we're about something else, I've, I've been to strip before. club or something. Um, <laughs> when you're talking about one and five, oh, Easter's coming you up. Know. You'll, you'll be there. <laughs> the strip clubs open on Easter. <laughs> it never closes. That's weird. Yeah. Worship, buddy. Um, <laughs> Joy. <laughs> Bunny. So, um, anyway. Anyway. Uh, Joel, I think it's awesome what you yeah. do. Uh, you've impacted my journey uh, through this. Mine too, bro. Um, I appreciate that. And Mine too. I, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. That, uh, for me, I, it's been I don't bad. know if you want to be associated with me in this circle or not. I, I'm not one of those old white guys, so. Well, listen. Kind of am now. But. Here's the thing. I'm Switzerland. You know the way I, I hate this, when people this say is, that shit. Well, okay, that, okay. I'm not fully Swede. I'm Swedish. But all right, like, and I'm not like, fully Jew, says, Jew, but I'm Jewish, Jewish right? <laughs> but here's the reality: is, is the way I explain, and so having to explain just. What the hell is this dental sleep medicine thing that, that yep. you're selling all these things for? I explained to him that it's a bunch of churches that got different preachers. Okay. Yet all those followers believe what that preacher's saying, even though they're reading out of the same damn book. Yeah. Right. right. I like that. And here's the thing. Which church do you want to go to? Right. Which church do you want to, you know, pass the 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 donation plate around yeah. because that's what it is. And yeah. as long as the, the message, it message isn't so fucking skewed one way or the other, yeah. like it's gotta be this or it's gotta be that. No, there's a happy medium that you should be able to discern and uh, make your own decisions right. and yeah. use the science, but also use the reality. Yeah. I mean, you gotta be, you got this far in life to be a doctor. Shit. You had to make some good decisions, right? Uh, you know, my mom and Jimmy used to say, don't believe nothing you hear and half of what you see and you should be all right. Yeah. You know, and she also said, you create your own misery. I like that. Oh, yeah. And anybody that says, ah, what a shitty time I'm having. Well, what'd you do to get there? Yeah. Right. So there's, there's opportunity to change um, a lot of that stuff. But I think the, uh, the industry is going to be fine. I think, mm -hmm. you know, the first ADSM I went to, there was probably 14 booths, right? And we just spawned this cottage industry. And I used to, re I remember going into Truett's office or he'd be losing his mind. And uh, I'd just say, guys, who do we want to be? Yeah. You know, do we want to just have a bigger garage door? There you go. Saying that we're the global leader and whatever. And that's the same thing. I posed the question when I got to Itamar. I'm like, God, we're working out of a tin building in the country of Massachusetts. Yeah. Yeah. You know, out in Franklin. Right. It's like, Really? Do we want to be the leader in home testing or what are we going to do? You know, you got to, you got to, if you're going to walk the walk, you know, talk the talk, walk the walk. Right. And I think that's where it just spurred more and more. And now what were there? 
60, 80 booths at the last yeah. ADSM in 2019. I didn't go. Uh, oh, you shouldn't have because it was before your time. There you go. But yeah. it was, but that's, that's what it is. It's created this thing that the whole yeah. mission, it seems like is to extract the check out of a, a, cl a clinician's pocket. There you and go. that's what they look at. Or and they're like defensive. Yeah. And you got people that are selling shit, like hawking used cars. Hey, you don't got to do that, man. Just tell them the truth. Yep. This is how it works. Well, if you're interested, we'll be here. To and again, I think, and, and we're going to wrap this up, but it's, it's people like you, Joel, um, that give me hope. And I, and I mean this, um, I've been around, I'm only doing this for another year and a half sales. I've been doing it since 2005. The goal was always to, to quit at 50. I know I don't look 50, uh, You're but 50? It's, it's a God's honest truth. I'm going to be, uh, I'm not doing it. I'm not going to travel. I'm not going to do it. I've, I've been in this industry long enough, but it's people like you, man, they, that I just so enjoy. I am inundated at meetings a lot like the one you just said, or being out in the field and seeing, just the complacency, the lying, um, the shoddiness, or just the fakeness. You, you're the real deal, man. And I, appreciate uh, that. I consider you a friend, uh, obviously a colleague. And uh, man, I really appreciate you being here today, brother. I really appreciate yeah. you guys having me. And, and I should have quit at 50 then, because then I wouldn't look like this. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go live in Key West and uh, Hanson Dan and I are open up a tiki bar. Um, Either that or a transportation it, service. It, it, oh yeah. <laughs> I just, I just, I just won a trip on an auction for a week in Key West. Nice. Yeah. I'll go down there with you. I got some, I got my buddies. On a couple I know my wife's going to let you, but hey, thank you for sleeping around, brother. All All right. Appreciate you, man. Thanks, Appreciate you, Joel. Thanks for having me. When the sun goes down.